Hello and welcome to our tutorial. Now a long time ago I made a couple of tutorials on alpha maps way back when the blog was the 3D student and I was looking through it and it's one of our most common questions. It's how to use alpha maps, how to make them work properly. So I decided to spend a lot of time and make an actual tutorial for you guys. So what we have here is our butterfly and as you can see around the edges there um, it's blocked out and the texture doesn't fit so what we're going to be doing is using alpha maps to refine the shape of these wings okay so first of all we're gonna go into our graphics program now I'm using GIMP because it's free and it works but you can use whatever you want. A lot of people use Photoshop, for example, and that works just fine. So what we have here is on one layer we've got our UV unwrap, which is really important. At some point we'll do another tutorial on that, but for now, not a big deal. Just that's what it is. And this is our normal texture here. And what we need to do is outline this texture and start turning it into an alpha map. So what you'd normally do is you'd go in, you'd pick your like free select tool it calls it, I just call it the lasso because that's what the little symbol is, and you start at one edge of the area you'd like to appear and just click around like this and select that area. Now, because I've already done a little bit of the processing, we don't need to do that right at this moment. All we need to do is select our magic tool and the blank space, go up to select and invert. I'm going to shrink it just slightly because I was using the magic tool, not drawing it right. So now we have our selection. We're going to take a new layer and we're going to fill this with white because we want it to appear. So that's going to appear on our map. If we invert it again and fill the background with black, that is our basic alpha map. So we'll remove our selection and export it as front wing alpha. Now obviously I've done this a few times already, please forgive me, I've not deleted all the files and redone it, but this is where we export it to, and I'll just hit replace. And then if we go back into our main program here, what we do is open up our lovely material editor, find our front wing material, it would normally load up here, it's our normal screen and come down to this maps area where it says opacity. We'll just click that and it will come up with this dialog box here. Now in this dialog box obviously you can add all sorts of different things. I remember a long time ago I added stuff like um, basic movies to make it animate I don't know if you can still do that, I know for a couple of versions you couldn't, so maybe worth checking into. But for right now, we want bitmap. If we just go back to our folder here, front wing alpha, and open that up. And then we need to render this out again, so I'm just going to pause you for a moment. Are we back? Okay, now I've rendered it and as you can see we've now got a much more refined shape for our front wing. And what we're going to do is just quickly take care of the back wings as well. And then we'll move on to the next step. So again, very familiar, you've got your UV map, you've got your diffuse map that I have up here. Oh, for some reason that's not the same size. Hang on. Layer to edge. There we go. And once again, we're going to take our magical tool, select the outside here, new layer, 
if we were being really good, we would name our layers, but we'll just ignore that for right now. Fill the selection with black. Select invert. And fill the middle with white. And then there's our other basic map. So we'll save that as Backwing Alpha. Ta-da! Then we go back in here and to our Backwing material. Back into Opacity, Bitmap, Backwing. Huzzah! I'm just going to render it out again real quick so you can see where we are and then we'll get on to the more fun stuff. Okay, and we're back again, and now you can see that it's once again been fit round to the correct shape. Now, what we're going to do for a couple of minutes is just show you really quickly another use for alpha maps to demonstrate that you can use it in conjunction with other materials, and then we're going to get into some more advanced stuff. So, bear with me while we're on our little tangent, and all will be revealed. So, what we're going to do is create a new material just for fun and giggles and we're going to call it mix map because we're going to be playing with those for just a moment now in here when we go to our diffuse instead of picking bitmap just to choose whatever we're going to choose if I can find it no I can't okay we're going to cheat <laughs> We're going to scroll down here to mix, click and drag to diffuse. It works the exact same way. Go into our diffuse map. Now, what we're going to do is in color number one, we're going to make it some outlandish color. Let's make it bright green, for example. Color two, let's choose our wing. We'll do the back wing because it's just easier to see. And then under mix amount, you can either mix it this way, and you can see it start to appear here, where it just looks kind of green. That's useful, but not what we're doing right now. Instead, we're going to click on the map next to it, bitmap, and choose our backwing alpha. Okay. Then we're going to make sure that our back wings are actually selected. Yes, unfreeze. Apply this material. And do you see here how it's got the main color and then our secondary color? I'm not going to bother rendering it out right now because I think it illustrates the point. I'll take off edged faces for just a moment. There you go. So you can see that it's taken our normal butterfly texture and instead of removing it, it's replaced it with the secondary color for our alpha map. Basically any black and white or grayscale map that you create can be used for a lot of different textures. And it's just plain useful, really. Um, we'll get more into mix maps at some other point, but I just thought it was important to show you. So I'm going to select these wings again and put their normal texture back on. There we go. Now what we're going to do is play a little bit with more advanced alpha maps. So if we jump back into our graphics program, to our front wing here. The first thing we're going to do is select this white area and just get rid of it. We don't need it. So if we come down to our diffuse, copy, and then paste, I'm just going to anchor that real quick. You can see that it's now on our one alpha layer. So what we're going to do again is just oh, select come back up to this layer and invert it so that we've got this color here selected. Alright, so what we're going to do is go up into our colors and whatever it is in Photoshop, I really don't remember, it's been a long time, 
but you should be able to find it. It's your hue and saturation settings. Now what we're going to do first is remove our saturation. So we've got a grayscale here. Now what you might want to do is lighten it. In fact, no, no we're not lightening it at this point. Ignore that, guys. Press OK. Now what we do need to do is because we're doing wings as opposed to anything else, we're just going to invert it so that this is our more detailed alpha map. Now, I know I've not explained it yet, so here's how they actually work. Um, basically, the 3D program interprets it and on a scale of black to white determining whether it appears or whether it doesn't appear. So the brighter a color is, the more opaque it will be. So you can see here we've got white, which means that this area is going to be completely seen. We've got gray, which means it will be slightly translucent, slightly see-through. And this part here will probably be mostly see-through. So what we're going to do is we'll just deselect for the moment, export, as front wing alpha complex. You can tell I've done this already, huh? So that's our front wing. I'm just going to quickly do the same to the back wing and then we'll go into our rendering program. So we've copy pasted and then anchored it onto our alpha layer. Now we need to select again. So we'll select it on the layer below because it's got a nice blank area. Then invert our selection so we can see this. Back up into our color for hue and saturation. Desaturate. Then we go color, invert. And depending on the effect you want, you might want to change your brightness levels. I think I'm going to because you can see this is more translucent than the last one is. So we're going to boost this a little bit. And I'm going to boost my contrast to probably to about here looks good to me. So select none, export. Backwing Alpha Complex, replace. Okay, so back into our 3D program here, into our materials. We're in our backwing. This is our alpha map where it normally is. If you just click here, then you can change the file. So we'll grab our backwing alpha. And then if we go to our front wing, same thing here. Click on the bitmap, bitmap, not bitmap, and change the file not to back wing. Um, there we are, our front wing alpha complex. So that's that. Now you can already see that it started to make a difference here. So I'm going to pause you guys and render it out, and then we'll take a look at our final result. And we're back. Look, this is our final render. You can see that there's large areas that are now partially see-through and completely see-through. And the really nice thing about using Mental Ray to render things is that it also affects your shadows here. So you can see holes in them, which is fantastic. Now, bear in mind that when you're doing alpha maps, they don't have to be bitmaps at all. Um, they can be pretty much anything you can think of, actually. You know, you could have any of these types of maps over here. So you could use bitmap, I'm assuming camera map per pixel is what you would do for animation now. Um, gradients, gradient ramps, marbling, noise, whatever you decide, you can use that too. It's just for the greatest control, you would use a bitmap. And you can get results like this. Or pretty much anything you want, really. Hide parts of your object, make it see through, do some really cool stuff with lighting. Whatever you choose. The world is your oyster now that you understand bitmaps. And of course, now that you understand bitmaps, this would be a fantastic time to point you over to 
our website if you've not already been there. So bear with me, I will pull that up for you. And what I do normally on the website is I'll post a new blog every week or so. Every week there's a new post in our mastery series, which is all about improving your work as a 3D artist. And where you want to go is to shadesofadream.com. I know, it's a pain in the neck to remember. And over here you'll get this lovely website, which is mine. And if you go into the blog section right here, all the latest tips and tricks and tutorials are found just in there for you. I hope you guys check it out. If you don't, that is totally fine by me. But if you do want to, it's shadesofadream.com. My name is Heather, and I have been your tutorial person today. It's been great speaking to you guys. Catch you later.